Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. This is Mary Jane in the building. Peep Squad is in the building. Please hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Let's bring our platform all the way to the top and platforms with us. Let's go all the way up. Let's hit numero uno. I didn't even say that right. So anyways, let's get it. Let's get it. Hit that like button. Share the video. Let's do this. Let's just move up to the top, baby. So let's talk about growing up hip-hop LA season four, episode 16. I was like, oh shit, Romeo. I was like, Romeo and Bow Wow and Angela in the same room together. There's no beef. And basically, Angela don't want Romeo or um, Bow Wow. And Romeo don't want Angela and Bow might probably want Angela now since he's single, but when he met up with her at the basketball tournament, he was with Kiyomi, and Bao was talking about having a kid too, so that's why he was using unprotected, that's why he was having unprotected sex with Kiyomi. He wanted a baby out of her, so that tells you that he has some love for her, straight up and down. But it's also wonderful to see Master P giving back and doing all these charity events that we see. And then him having, like, the people that Master P have in the studio working with him, the producer, the security, they be all black. It just be like that black love, that black support. Because once you went, once you hit a higher level like that, it's so much, it's, it, it, it's so good to see you give back because there's a lot, of, there's not a lot of African Americans are in the same predicament as Master P and Romeo and stuff like that and so it's always good to open that gate open that door bring your peoples in for real for real black love black power all, all day every day baby so that was good to see and we see TT's kind of like minding her business she's been on a low and we see Pep is basically trying to decide whether she should stay with Dre Andre or leave him or whatever because it's causing and it's affecting her business whether she stayed with him or not. And it's affecting Salt and Pepper. So at the end of the day, Pep made the wise choice to leave Dre alone. Let him get his shit together. And then Pep done paid for her apartment, her condo, you know, and everything like that. It seemed like last episode that Pep was acting like she was surprised that Andre was married. Or it, like like she didn't know. So I so evidently Pep knows that Andre was married and they were separated getting divorced. She got voicemails. The wife came out and was like, I want some of this shine. I want some clout. I want to be popping too. So she dropped the dime. Like, damn, why are you going to drop the dime on your bread and butter? She's paying for your... The, the lease is in Pep's name and she's paying for it. Like, some people are brain dead sometimes like pep is paying for your condo you already know the money's good you already know she paid it up for like six months seven months she paid the shit up i would have been quiet getting my money together saving my money going back to school doing something to generate new income so when pep pulls the carpet from under me i'll be good and now we see that sam Egypt's boyfriend is not really feeling you know um brie now because brie was out there talking about pep you know, boyfriend, you know, did some gay porn. And there is a video out. I didn't see the video. It's on Pornhub or U-Hub or some shit like that. There are pictures. I did see some of the pictures, but the pictures are blocked off with, you know, showing all the penis and stuff because I'm good. My, I don't need to see none of that. So he's not too happy with TT. And it seems like, e I mean, he's not too happy with Brie. And it seems like Egypt is kind of not happy with you know, um, Brianna too as well because Pep is their mother and Sam knows that, you know, Pep is the bread and butter. Then you see when they went up into, you know, um, Egypt's apartment, they do, it looked like he driving Uber. He got no shirt on. I went to hat, sweating and shit, looking like he's all higher than a skunk with that good marijuana out there in Cali in California. So, you know, don't go against the money bags. You always got to protect the bag. And so Sam is protecting the bag. <laughs> so I was like, damn, Brie, you're not going to have no friends, girl. I wish Brie could just show her personality that she, sh that she shows on Instagram and when she makes videos and not this personality that we see on the show because it's not that likable or whatever. So we got that situation. And we got, you know, Romeo, you know, he's falling out. He's, you know, he's he's so busy. He got to get an IV and shit. He got to get a vitamin I, IV and whatever. And we got JoJo passing the bone line. Everybody know that little twist likes Egypt. I was like, damn, he told Titi. So, you know, this shit ain't going to stay a secret. So next episode, Titi's going to be telling Sam or she's going to be telling Egypt. She's going to tell the business because that's what Titi does. And Titi's feeling a certain type of way because she missed Romeo photo shoot and everything. And she's feeling bad about the situation just because, you know, um... She didn't show up. She went on her date or whatever, and she's feeling kind of guilty, you know, because she's the face and the brand of, you know, 
Romeo's, you know, clothing line. So she's feeling a certain type of way. So she's trying to get close and basically trying to apologize to him or whatever, trying to let him know that she's supporting him. I was like, damn, I miss me with all that bullshit. So anyways, let's get started. So we have, you know, Romeo and Angela, basically, they talking on the phone, having a little conversation. Romeo's telling her how tired and how worn out he is, and he's talking about he got to make money for their future kids. And Angela was like, what? Like, Romeo and Angela need to stop playing around because we know that they ain't hooking up no time soon. That, that, that ship them freaking sell a long time ago. You know, but anyways, we have that. She was like, oh, Romeo, kids. Like, you know, I'm, you know, I wonder if Romeo's really serious. Like, damn, like, come on. We know you don't care, Angela. <laughs> Romeo's being fake. Angela's being fake. It is what it is. Their friendship is stronger. He invites Angela out to NOLA to go to the basketball game. And she's coming through and she's happy. Then we got TT, Vanessa, and JoJo. They meeting up or whatever. And they steal JoJo's chicken off of his pancakes. I was like, that breakfast spot looked like you know how to make some food, baby. So we have that situation. And basically, you know, JoJo was like, how come you wasn't at Romeo's photo shoot? I was there. You wasn't there. And you the brand. You the face. What's good? And she was like, I was on a date. And it was like on a date with who? And TT was zip, zip. You know, TT and my, she was like, I'm not going to be talking to time. I ain't running my mouth. She was with rich homie Quan. Mm, rich homie Quan's in the building. So she was with him or whatever. So she ain't even saying nothing about that situation. She's trying to keep her mouth closed because she don't want she don't want them to be talking about her or whatever. So that's when JoJo drops the secret that little twist, you know, likes Egypt and he's feeling her. And TT was like, you should have kept that to yourself. I don't know why you even said something because you know it's going to get her. TT was like, you know, I got to tell. I can't keep secrets like that. And TT would do it just to get back at Sam because Sam was mad, disrespectful to her. And the, not the last episode, but the episode before last. And, you know, TT, she can get at you when she wants to. Just like she didn't show up to Romeo's photo shoot and she went out on her date, even though Romeo asked her at the last minute, TT will get her thing. She, she can get back at you. And so we get TT and Pep. They meet up and they having a conversation. You know, TT got the wine because she's always chilling at Pep house because she got the pool, the jacuzzi, that big ass mansion. I'll be chilling at my auntie's house too. You see, Pep and TT got them long ass legs. Egypt got the long legs too. But that big old booty that, you know, Pep put on her is just way too much. You'll see it in the slideshow when she has on all white. I was like, damn, Pep, that ass is too big. Ah, push it. Push it real good. Ah, push it. <laughs> I was just thinking about this song. Ah, push it. <laughs> What's my weakness, man? <laughs> so we have that situation. So Pep was like, girlfriend, I got to talk to you. So at least, you know, Pep got somebody to talk to outside of her manager. She let TT know that the situation with Andre, she knew that he was married. He was he was getting a divorce. Both of the, the wife knew that they was getting divorced. She had text messages. She has conversations from her. You know, they both had to leave the apartment or the condo they were staying in. She had no money. She had nowhere to go. And so Pep paid for the lease for her to be there and stay there. And so now this girl going to come out and say all this negative stuff and post it to Twitter. Twitter, post it to Instagram and all that other stuff. And she fell. She felt a certain type of way about the situation. Like, damn, that's shady. And she was like, you know, Andre, he takes care of his kid. He takes care of his baby or whatever. But, you know, Jimmy, my manager, told me that, you know, that deal I told you we had that was six figures. Basically, you know, I lost that deal. And there could be many more deals I can lose. And I have to choose between Andre and my career, salt and pepper. And so... Basically, Pep is like, you know, I can never be happy. You know, I want love. It's like, it's not about my happiness. I got to put my career on hold. Blah. It doesn't seem like Andre is the ideal guy for Pep. But she's old enough to make her own decisions. But sometimes God protects us fools. And so the manager stepped in and got Pep out of that situation. I don't know if she's still still with him on the DL, on the down low. But I feel like with Pep prestige and her reputation and her just being a legend. She can find a legend. She can find a younger dude that's bigger, better, better body that don't have all the baggage. This dude got so much baggage that Pep don't need to deal with that too as well. Especially if he's coming in between a career. She should have eye candy that, that she wants to show around and, and flaunt in front of everybody without have without it interfering with her business. And that's what it is. And I don't know. It's just that he's bad for business because, you know, they try to make a double standard that older women can't date young dudes. But you can date whoever you want to. But if the young dude come with baggage that can affect your career and your reputation, then you have to think about which one's more important. And she's old enough to know better, too, as well. And she can have somebody that don't even have any kids if she want to. 
Pep is not ugly. She's a beautiful woman. She got a nice personality. She likes to party. She likes to hang out. She got money. She can go on vacation. She can do whatever the hell she want to do. She's about that life. She could do that, and she can pick a better partner. But so happens she picked Andre, and she and she fell in love with the D. She'll do this for the D, but she ain't losing that check for the D. <laughs> go, Pep. So anyways, so she's leaving Pep alone. I mean, Pep is leaving Andre alone, but that's later on in the episode. And basically, you know, TT, you know, talks in her confessional like you know there's more information coming up about Andre with this porn that TT brought up which is just shady or whatever so no one's really addressing that situation so I don't know if Pep is actually going to address that situation with Brianna basically tell her like like why you do that but if it's news and she she has a podcast and people are reporting on the story most likely she is but when it's your friends or people that you're supposed to be close to then you think twice about it because you're friends with Egypt you're friends with Pep but I guess news is news, baby. So we have that situation. So I was like, damn. But then we got uh, Master P. He's in the studio making a soundtrack for I Got the Hookup too. I think that I think I don't know if it already came out, but I heard good um, reviews about it. Not like I I don't know. I guess the I just heard it was good. I heard they got a lot of good actors in the movie or whatever. So. Um, he's in the studio, he's looking for Romeo, Romeo ain't nowhere around cause he's somewhere acting, he's somewhere doing this and that, he's filming, 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 he wants to be an actor, Blasley the third. Master P was like, I don't know where my son at, but he better be here, he's supposed to drop the hook on the part two, and he ain't here, but since he don't want to be here, then I'm gonna bring Bow Wow to the basketball game, and then he's gonna be like, whoa, and, and then the dude was like, two of the littles in the room at the same time, and then Master P ain't like, nothing about them little no more. <laughs> So, I remember the beef between Romeo and Bow Wow. That shit was legendary. I went to go see Bow Wow. I went to go see Little Romeo. Anything that came on MTV or BET or VH1, the music channel, anything that came up, I was looking at it. The magazines, because the internet wasn't popping like it is popping out. Imagine we had the Romeo and the Bow Wow beef now. It'll be crazy. So, I'm glad it never went to nothing you know, nothing big. So that so that situation was cool. So, you know, Master P's doing his thing. We got um Romeo, he's at the doctor basically getting some vitamin B, some vitamin C, some vitamin D, some vitamin E. Basically cause he's he's you know, he's having heart, his heart is kinda like slow or he having palpitation or something like that and he's not able to sleep. It takes him thirty minutes to get out of bed and he's too young to be going through that. So basically he's wearing himself out. So he's trying to get some help with the situation because he's he he's running his body down. And so then we move on to Jojo and Vanessa. Jojo and Vanessa have a conversation and you know Vanessa was like remember winning circle when you guys took the photo together with the winning horse? You know, Angela did not even invite me to go down there to take a picture. Like I'm just out of the picture and Jojo was like I'm sick of this shit and jojo also said it seems like angela is slight a little bit disrespectful to you know vanessa and he's feeling that way and i'm surprised jojo actually said that shit on camera because usually he stays more neutral so basically jojo is going to have a conversation with angela to find out yo what's up why are you treating vanessa like this and then vanessa wanted to talk to angela but she's in haiti and so is that situation. So you have two sisters. So you have Vanessa kind of complaining about the way that Angela treats her. Angela act like she don't got time for Vanessa. She don't want to hear it. I know they are sisters. But then you have the other half sister, you know, that was on like a couple of seasons ago. She had a run in with, you know, Angela. Her and Vanessa made up, but Angela wasn't giving her the time or day and treating her a certain type of way. And then Angela made that situation about her. And so now we have this situation. So you have two sisters complaining on the way that you're treating them, the way that you're acting, the way that you're ignoring them. And even JoJo was like, yo, we got to try to sit down and have a conversation with Angela. But she just gets up and runs or walk away and bounce and stuff like that. So they're going to try to get her to sit down and basically have that conversation. And, you know, um, JoJo was like, this has been going on since you guys were children or whatever. So, we'll see what happens with that situation. I don't know if this is for the cameras or whatever, but we got two sisters that complained about Angela and the way that she treats them. And basically, Vanessa wants to do, you know, the um, clothing line or whatever. And Angela doesn't want to do it. She's busy. She got better things to do or whatever. And so, we have that situation. So, now, you know, JoJo's talking about he's going to the basketball game that's in, you know, Nola, he's going there, he's playing, and Blase in the third. TT can't go because TT didn't show up to, you know, the photo shoot, so she didn't get an invite. 
but she's still there because guess who brought her? None other than Pep. Pep brought Pep. You know, she had, you know, TT tag along with her too as well. She brought TT. She wanted to chill with grown women. It was, <laughs> so, you know, Pep and TT was chilling and them getting out the car and they was dancing. I was like, I thought it was so cute too. So, and they're chilling. I, I like to see Pep when she's happy too as well. Uh, but sometimes we just pick, you know, bad relationships. So, I mean, so anyways, we get to the basketball game. Romeo shows up. You know, Angela, she gets out in this green dress. Her green dress was lit. Green is my favorite color, but she kept pulling that dress down. If you got to keep pulling it down, that means it's too short. Every time she walked a little step, pulling it down. <laughs> I remember doing that. Wearing something so short. You know it's so short, but if you stand up and you be still, it won't move. But once you walk and them hips and that booty started popping, that dress goes right up to the top, especially if you got dumps in the trunk. No, <laughs> sorry, stop. Um, So we have the... Inf so then that happens, and then we have Angela and Bow Wow. They meet up and they have a conversation. Bow Wow talks about how he's mature, how he has a, you know, he wants to have a kid. He's gonna settle down. He has a girlfriend and all this other stuff. And then here comes JoJo. JoJo was like, Romeo, what's up? What are you doing here? And then so you know, Angela was like, Romeo has matured. He wants children. JoJo was like, children, not with you, right? JoJo be throwing in comments. If you listen to what JoJo says, he be correcting Romeo. He be correcting Bow Wow when it comes to his sisters. He didn't correct Bree when Bree was calling, you know, both of his sisters bitches or whatever. But he be throwing in his little shots. If you listen to what JoJo says, he don't be playing. He be talking shit, but he be, he say it in a joking tone and like he's joking or whatever. But and Angela was like, no, no. Bob was like, I, I, you know, I got a girl. I've been with, this, I've been with my girl for years, blah, a year, or whatever. And we know it's Kiyomi. Too bad they're still not together. So we have that situation. And so then Bob was like, I'm gonna be on a court with Romeo. Um, so Bao talks to Jojo to have a conversation and basically they're talking about the beef. Like I'm only, I'm only 15. No, I'm only 18. I'm only 16. I make more money than your father. And so basically everybody, um, hyped that up and said that he was talking about Romeo and Master P. That's where the beef took out, took off at. And then on top of that, the Angela situation, Bao said it was no, no disrespect towards Master P or Romeo. It was like, yeah, everybody, been, have, the media been talking about this beef for like 15, 16 years now. So they both get on a the court, they play ball, and it is what it is. They're on different teams. You know, Romeo team wins, of course, because he's more healthy and more in shape, and he had more people on his team. Bao Wow did good too as well, you know. Um, and Bao, you know, kind of like foul Romeo, which gave Romeo... Um, he gets to go to the free throw line, and he made them two shots. Master P was like, he had better made them shots because we, because I used to play professional foot, um, professional basketball with the Toronto Raptors, and Toronto Raptors used to be my team, especially when Vince Carter was on the Toronto Raptors. The um, Toronto Raptors was my team for a few years. Let me tell you, straight up and down, and so you know, Romeo kind of fouled. I mean, Bao kind of fought Romeo. Romeo hit the ground, got the got his two free throws in, and he actually won the game. Bao was like, yeah, I don't get paid to play basketball. I smoke so much weed. You know, Romeo's a clean-cut guy. He don't drink. He don't smoke and all this other stuff. And so I was like, that's the difference of having a... You see the difference between Bao and Romeo is because one had a father and the other one didn't, and that's really true. And sometimes people can... Um, you don't have issues and situations when you do have a father. And sometimes you do, if you do have a father, if you don't have a father, it all depends on the individual and how the individual was raised and what type of support they receive as growing up so they can develop into healthy human beings. But you don't see, you know, the blogs talking crazy about Romeo, you know, the block, the blogs talk crazy about Bow Wow and suicide and all types of different things like that. So moving on from that situation, TT was like, oh, so you know, we're going to have this Bow Wow and, you know, Romeo thing fighting over, you know, Angela. Angela sitting there like, mm-hmm, like, yeah, yeah, like, mm-hmm, like, what, what? And everybody turned it, a lot of people in the media turned it into, like, uh, Romeo and Bow Wow fighting for Angela's love, love and basketball, basically. So you have that situation and everything. So it was cool. And they took a picture together, and Angela was in the middle, so people were saying, oh, look at that, or whatever. Titi was kind of jealous. She was. So Titi followed, you know, Romeo around to 
when he went to Essence to with his father to actually speak about black businesses, black people supporting each other and stopping the beef and hip hop and teach people how to make money and get dollars. And that's very important. And it's very important that they, they even showed that little part of what they said on this show so so it can tap into somebody's mind and then on top of that for them to say that essence fest so that was cool i you know you know master p is the man baby so we have that situation and romeo is a really good young man too as well even though bow wow has his trouble he's trying his best so we have brie she goes to see egypt and she goes to see Sam, and they looking at her like she don't belong. Sam was like, I can't stand her. I don't like her now. I thought she was sweet and, like, sassy or feisty, but now she's, like, really an asshole because of the interview. I mean, the podcast that she did talking about Pep, you know, man at the time, saying that, you know, he did gay porn and all this other stuff. And so then, you know, Egypt shows a picture of Romeo and Bao and Angela, and Angela's in the middle. And so she shows the picture to Brie. Brie was like, yeah, and she's supposed to be a virgin. And so they was like, damn, I was just showing a picture. I didn't want no flack from it. So, you know, Sam was looking at her like, no, I don't know if she's feeling unwelcome, but it seems like Sam and Egypt is not welcoming to Brie because what they said, because of what she said, even though it's not wrong, it's not a lie. But I guess they didn't want her to bring that up. I was just like, damn, I didn't know that he did gay porn until the show. So, but, you know, it is what it is. And so we have Romeo and Master P and actually JoJo. They're doing some uh, community project and doing, you know, like a charity at an old folks home or senior citizens home. I didn't mean to say old folks home, but senior citizen home. And Romeo got his shirt off. He got a fan base over there. Girls looking at him. His father's like, look at these girls looking at you. And it was over there. You know, Romeo loved every bit of that attention. That's why he had his shirt off flex. And he took one of them NOLA girls home. I'm telling you. <laughs> but some people say Romeo um, don't like girls with melanin i don't know if that's true but that's what the word i heard i don't know i don't believe it's true but it is what it is so we have that situation and so then jojo throws romeo under the bus and was like yo when you gonna work on that you know i got to hook up to you know soundtrack romeo was like don't throw me under the bus i'm get all the work done don't worry about it blase the third then we have pep she's on a tour bus she's with her manager jimmy and basically, you know, he's letting her know it's do or die. You either choose salt and pepper, you choose your career, or you choose Andre. Either or, you better choose. You better choose the right one. So she chose salt and pepper. She chose her career, even though Andre was blowing her up at the basketball game. But she didn't want to talk to him until she makes a final decision. She was like, "I didn't want Andre to come to be my security. You no, know, damn well you didn't got no. He was gonna be your security. He was gonna be your date." And, you know, um, Egypt and Stan was like, damn, they wanted to go to Essence Fest. They wanted to go to the celebrity basketball game. So they're not feeling Brie wait. They're not feeling Brie like that at all. So we'll see how the tables have turned. So we see, so we see Titi's almost getting back into everybody's good grace. And she's back in Angela and, and Vanessa's good grace. She's back in, I guess, Sam and Egypt's good grace. And she's back into, you know... She's never been out of Pep's good grace or whatever. Pep loves her some TT. TT loves some Pep too. Uh, you know, that's a good auntie. You know what I'm saying? So you have that situation. And then we have JoJo. He ends up talking to his sister, basically telling her that, you know, Vanessa feels a, ter a certain type of way. She feels like she can't talk to you, that you're mean to her, you're spiteful. You didn't ask her to take the picture. You walk out on her and, like, you know... So Angela was like, oh, I don't know. I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. I'm hurting somebody's feelings. Like, damn, like, she don't really give a shit. Angela don't give a shit. And she was like, I don't know I'm doing anything wrong. So sometimes, I guess if she don't know, she don't know. But it seems like she could know. Because she, she acts so sensitive, too, when people bring stuff to her attention. And she starts to cry up. How come she's not sensitive to other people when she's addressing them or they're asking her questions and they want to talk to her? So, you know, she, she feels like she's going to throw her sister a birthday party. And hopefully that will help them bring their relationship back together. Because Angela's going to stay in L.A. because she has a gig to do. Like, she got all these jobs to do. And she don't want her sister to do this one job pastries. I'm telling you, that dress that Angela had on was banging. So, moving on from that situation. So, we'll see. She was like, oh, I didn't know about the winning circle. I just, it just happened so quick. It was so hot outside. I just took the picture. She didn't think it was a big deal, but you know, uh, Vanessa felt left out. And what would Angela, if the shoe was on the other feet, would Angela have felt, felt left out? That's the question. 
So we'll see what happens. So she's going to have a surprise birthday party. And then we get Angela Romeo at the end. Romeo gets dissed again. She was, Angela was like, Romeo, I'm going to set you up on a blind date. Romeo's playing, the, he was like, play the romantic music. He was like, we can go paddle. And she was like, oh, a date. Angela said date. And Romeo was like, a date, a date. She was like, a blind date, my friend. And Angela doesn't want to mess up her relationship with with um Romeo. So we'll see what happens. It seems like Sam is getting to character. He knows what to say, how to say. And he's coming He's, he's really becoming more of a cast. He's trying to stay. And we didn't see little easy. We didn't see little twists. So peace to my one love.